All right, we're going to do another paint along. Yeah. So I decided I wanted to do a paint along because St. Patty's Day is right around the corner. It is upon us. And I thought that this would be a fun opportunity to paint on one of my rocks that I found over the summer. I did one of these, um, I think it was like around July. Um, I did a, I'm gonna pull it off over here so you can see it. I did a paint along and did this really cool galaxy nighttime sky rock paint along and it was my first ever paint along for my channel and since then I have done a few and I do have a segment of you my fans who absolutely love painting on rocks. My chair is very creaky. In case you're wondering what that weird noise is. <laughs> um, but yes, there's a segment of you that love to paint on rocks and you guys have shown me some of your amazing creations and I think they are fantastic. So for those of you who love painting on rocks, I know you're going to really like this one. For those of you who have never painted on a rock, I'm going to walk you through what I do, my process, and I'll let you know that rocks are a really fun thing to collect. It's a great activity. You can go out, you know, wherever it is you live and you can pick up different rocks and things. And I find that stream areas or, you know, creeks are a good place to find you know, flat, flat rocks like this. Um, I have a tendency to like flat rocks. Some people like very rounded rocks. And so maybe this summer when all the snow melts, I'll go out and I'll try to find some that are kind of curved, way more curved than these, <laughs> and do a few more paint alongs on something like that. But what we are going to do today is we are going to paint a semi-realistic four-leaf clover. So that's neat. And while we're painting, I'm going to walk you through the process, but I'm also going to share some interesting fun facts about four-leaf clovers with you. And so what I have here is I have my Apple Barrel paint, which is a great acrylic paint to use if you want something that is non-toxic and actually very inexpensive. And I have an assortment of brushes. I have a water container. I have rocks. I am actually going to paint on this dark rock today. I have a white pencil, and you will see why I need that white pencil as I get going. Um, if you have a light colored rock, you might not need to use a white pencil. Just putting that out there. And I have a palette to put my paint. I have protected my surface, my table, my working area with a piece of, a large piece of, of paper. Um, so if you are painting these, Make sure you, you know, put something down to protect whatever surface you're working on. And I think that is it. I think that's all we need. I think we should get started. So for the first part, I'm going to move my paint out of the way. The first thing we are going to do is, since this is a very dark colored rock, I am going to lightly sketch with a white pencil on this rock. So the reason we do this is because we are going to prime. So I'm just going to kind of work out. We're going to prime this, this area that we're going to be painting green. We are going to be priming it out with white. We will let it dry and then we will go ahead 
and we will be painting our green color on top of that. And the reason why we are going to do it that way is because this is a very dark rock and I want my green colors to be very bright and having a white background often will help if you are using, um, you know, light, light, light colors, like, cause we're going to be using some yellow shades in this, some light green. We're going to have dark green. We're going to have all, <laughs> we're going to have several different shades of green. And as I'm, I'm, I'm working this out, kind of planning what I'm going to be painting. If I don't like it, I can erase it with an eraser. And you will see that I am making my four leaf clover fairly large. Sometimes when you draw clovers, you can make the, the petals or the leaves of them have sort of a heart shape if you want. In this particular case, I'm not going to do a heart shape. I'm just kind of creating this interesting, almost like a squared off teardrop shape. If you can see that. And I have drawn this in a specific way because some of these leaves, these two leaves here, are going to be tucked behind these two leaves. You don't have to do that. You can draw, you know, your leaves on your clover however you want to, but this is just kind of what I'm going with for today. And as I sort this out, I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't want to add a stem. And the reason why I don't want to add a stem is because I want this to be able to be displayed in any arrangement. I mean, adding a stem might make it to where you have to just kind of, you know, display it in a certain way for that stem to actually make sense. If you want your art to make sense, it does not have to make any sense at all. But <laughs> for the sake of this one, I'm just kind of... I think I, I'm happy with that, that sketch. And I decided, because I actually like the raw appearance of this rock, so I'm not going to do any background. I'm going to leave the natural background and just focus on painting the four-leaf clover. All right, so now if you are satisfied with your drawing, you can begin the priming process. So all I'm going to do is use some Apple Barrel White. Got to shake it up really good. And this particular Apple Barrel paint is uh, all, all of this uh, Apple Barrel I, I personally use is a matte. I, use, I like um, matte paint because I like having versatility with it. So if I put matte paint down and then after I'm done painting and I want it to look shiny, I can always put a top coat on to make it shiny so I can actually make decisions. I had cat hair on my palette. Go figure, right? My cats are always getting up here. So just take a little bit of white paint. And then you find a brush that you like to use, preferably a medium size or small would probably be sufficient for this. Or maybe even a square, kind of a squarish. You could use a rounded brush, you can use a square brush, you can use pretty much whatever you want. And this does not have to be perfect and beautiful at all, just kind of fill in all of the space. And if it's a little bit streaky, that's okay, because we're going to be painting on top of it. It does not matter. So you don't have to be a crazy perfectionist at this stage. And while I am 
painting out my petals or my leaves. Are they leaves? I think they are leaves. I always want to say pet petals or for flowers. <laughs> petals are for flowers. Leaves are for things that are not flowers, I suppose. <laughs> I always say the I have a tendency to confuse that. But while I'm doing this, I am going to give you a few fun facts that I learned about four-leaf clovers. And the first thing I learned was that the four leaves are of the clover. The four leaves, they actually represent something. And what they are said to represent is faith, hope, love, and luck. See, I had no idea that there were there were meanings associated with each leaf. I thought they were just considered lucky, like a lucky charm or a lucky symbol. But I, I did not know that until I think it was yesterday. I said, aw, isn't that sweet? Okay. And when I'm priming this out, I do attempt to try and at least get it somewhat smooth. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. And my rock has some, you know, divots and chips in it and funny texture. So sometimes you kind of got to, you know, work with that sort of texture. And one of the ways that you can actually work paint, like I'm going to show you here, you can work paint into texture is if you hold your brush up and you kind of stipple or dab. Stipple it and actually work the paint in. If you have any strange cracks or grooves or anything like that, if you want, you can just kind of work the paint into those grooves by stippling it. And this paint dries fairly quickly, which is good if you are a bit of a speed demon with painting. <laughs> Sometimes I like to paint fast. Um, so quick drying paint actually works out in my favor. For those of you who are a slower painter, there are additives that you can put in your paint if you want to slow down the process. And I will show you one of those things that I use sometimes. If I want to slow down the process of my paint drying, I add uh, what's called a retarder. And this will give you a little more time if and usually you only need like a drop or two you don't need very much of this and it just gives you a little more time to actually work with the paint like if you're blending things or if you're a little bit of a slow painter this is something that you can use and that's very helpful i don't always use this but sometimes sometimes i do it just really depends on what i am painting um, and sometimes I, like I said, I paint really fast and other times I prefer to slow it down and this, this helps. This also is really good because it helps you waste less paint. And I know for my artist people out there or people who are just getting into art, you notice that there are paints that are exceptionally expensive and you don't want to waste a single drop of that awesome, you know, paint. You want to be able to maximize your usage. And so that, having that as an extender, it actually helps me, you know, work and not have to feel so much, you know, pressure and guilt. Because sometimes you get those guilt feelings. You're like, oh gosh, I wasted a bunch of paint on this. Yeah. 
So that actually comes in handy. Okay. And I'm going to hit you with another fact about four leaf clovers. Um, this type of clover, the four leaf clover, was considered to have powerful magic. And children who lived in the Middle Ages believed that if they carried a four leaf clover with them, that, that it actually enabled them to see fairies. Wild, right? So <laughs> I can just imagine all of these little medieval children carrying their little clovers around, peeking under leaves and walking through the forest, you know, hoping that they get to see a fairy. It's, it's actually quite adorable. And that's something I did not know. But I, I think that's kind of delightful. I think uh, children are, are <laughs> there's such a, a beauty to, to that sense of wonder that children have about the world. And, oh, it's adorable. I used to be like that when I was little. I used to think that maybe mermaids were real or fairies. And I, I had this sense of wonder at, you know, the supernatural and things of that nature. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of a break. And I am going to let this dry completely. If you want to speed that up, of course, you can use a hair dryer or you can put this in front of a heater or you can just sit there and blow on it until it's dry whatever it is you want to do or you can just be very patient and let it dry slowly that's totally up to you but i'll be right back and we'll start putting some color on this okay so this is very very dry I am very happy with how that looks. So now we are going to take a medium shade of green, whatever shade you want. This particular one is called Kelly Green. Going to put a little bit of that on my palette. And we are going to do what is called color blocking. This is something that I do very frequently in my artwork. That's just, it's just a sort of preferred method I have. There's lots of different ways that you can paint, but I like to put down, find like a mid-tone, and often I like to just paint everything in a sort of mid-tone color. So this is going to be kind of like our medium tone in our four-leaf clover. So all you got to do is paint the the petals out entirely and if you need to put two coats of paint on you can do that that is up to you I might end up doing two coats of paint of this mid-tone just to make sure I get really good coverage and I try to you know, get the, you know, put the paint on as smooth as I can. Of course, if it has some brush strokes in it, that is totally okay. And I'm going to tell you a little, little fun story about me as a child and also me as an adult. But when I was a kid, I grew up in the country, many of you know that, grew up on a, for, a, a farm, essentially. Um, it was a dairy farm for many years, and it was not an operating dairy farm when I was growing up, but the, the farm has been in my dad's side of the family for quite a number of years, and we had I think it's like 86 acres, 90 acres, something like that. I think the, the actual number is 86. So we had a lot of land and grass to run when I was growing up. And it was 
lovely. And something I can tell you, in all of my travels, New York State has amazing grass. Spring and the summer, the grass is so beautiful. It is very, very soft, and it is much different than the grasses that are in the south, because a lot of times if you go into the south and you actually notice the grass, it's very, very sharp and pointy, and it isn't necessarily the most comfortable to run around in with bare feet. But here, where I am from, the grass is very, very soft, and we used to love running around barefoot, and I still will kick off my shoes and run around barefoot. And we used to just roll around in the grass, play in the grass, all of that fun child, childhood stuff. And one of the fun things every year was when the, you know, clover would start to come up. And as kids, we used to really enjoy looking for four-leaf clovers. So it was kind of a game where you got right down in the clovers and you, you hunted for the lucky ones. And sometimes it took you a really long time, but you'd find one and then you were super excited and you felt like you were having the best day <laughs> just finding a clover and you'd get excited and you'd have to go run and show somebody that you actually found one. And of course there were other days when you would look and look and look at the clover and you wouldn't ever find a four leaf clover. So it was always a, a, you know, a fun little delightful thing just looking for four leaf clovers. And the, just the excitement of, oh my gosh, I found one, yay, now I'm going to have good luck forever, is so fun. And I think um, children, I don't know, this is just something that I think, I think kids play in the grass and, and have more of a, they're more tuned in to things that are, are down low because you're short when you're little. You're, you're growing, you're little, you're closer to the ground. So I think that children oftentimes will notice things like clover and flowers in a different way than, than maybe adults do because adults are generally tall and they're a little further away. And so their perception is different. They, and they, you know, when you're an adult, you, you, you sometimes put aside the, the fun things of childhood and stuff. But I, as a 37 year old human, still will take the time on occasion to get down in the grass and look for four leaf clover. I still do it. It's just a, a beautiful thing for me to do because, you know, we get so busy. We're always busy. We're always working. We're always worried and stressed out and got all this going on. But sometimes it's good to just take a break and go and find something like that where you can just kind of focus in on something as simple as looking for a four-leaf clover. Get down in the grass. Uh, but those of you who have grass allergies, maybe that's not such a, a wonderful experience, but I think you catch what I'm trying to impart to you is that it's, it's good to, you know, pay attention to nature, you know, give it a little bit of your time and, and afterwards you, you, you feel happy. You feel, at least I do, I feel a little more serene, a little more at peace if I get down in the grass and uh, pretend I'm eight years old again looking for four-leaf clovers. All right, so I am sufficiently happy with my base coat and you may notice that there is a little bit of the colored pencil that is sort of peeking out. But when we're completely done with this, we can get an eraser and we can actually erase that so you don't, you don't see it, it goes away. So don't be concerned. 
if you can still see your pencil drawing because we can handle that at the very end. It is no big deal. All right, so now we are going to move on to, you can choose whichever one you like better. I have a pale daffodil color, which is a very light yellow. And I also have a color called Limeade, which is a very bright, it's a light and bright green. And I am going to, for today, just use the limeade and see how it looks initially. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit, you don't need very much of this, just a, just, just a little bit, a little bit of the limeade on the palette. And then I am going to get one of my, I have a couple different smaller brushes here. And what we are going to do now is we are gonna add some of the light bits in to our four leaf clover. So I'm going to start, let's see, where do I wanna begin? I think I wanna start right here. And if you, you wanna look at some reference pictures of clovers, they, there's lots of different ones all over the, the internet if you need to, like a reference to kind of look at. Um, but they have some of these, most, I think most of the clovers have this sort of, I don't even know what you would call it. It's just this weird marking in the leaves. It almost looks like, I don't even know what it, what is it? What would you guys say this? It looks like maybe a halo. I don't know. It's kind of just this interesting coloration pattern. I don't know. There might be a cool name for it and I'm just not aware of what it is. But how I am achieving this is I'm making some brush strokes that go up and down like this, kind of like a zigzag. And as I'm putting them on, I'm making them arc, as you can see right here. So it's kind of a neat, a neat arc. And just this up and down, sort of zigzag in an arc. And we're gonna do this to all of the leaves. And we have these two leaves that are, are behind these leaves. So I'm gonna do the leaves that are in front first just because that is what I decided to do. <laughs> no particular reason, just kind of decided I'm gonna work on the forefront first. You can go in the background and do those first if you really want to, if you've created an overlap. And of course, these don't have to be perfect. I don't think there's anything in nature that is perfect, so I'll try to at least make them appear somewhat symmetrical, but I don't really stress out about them looking exactly the same. Nature is very forgiving in that remark, or regard rather, in that regard. And so as I t do my little zigzags, I'm gonna hit you with another fun fact about four leaf clovers. So. For every lucky four-leaf clover, there are approximately 10,000 three-leaf clovers. That's a lot. That is a lot. So it kind of gives you an, an idea of how rare they actually are. Okay, and I might put two, two coats on these just to pump up the color to make them very, very bright. And the reason why the four leaf clovers are exceptionally rare is because there are actually zero clover plants that produce four leaves naturally. 
So the vast, vast majority of clovers you will find are just the three leaf variety. <laughs> okay, so zigzag, zigzag. All right. I'm I'm very excited for spring to get here again. It's been a feels feels like a very been a very long and very snowy winter and it's been fairly cold this year um it's not i guess it's not exceptionally cold i remember there being much colder days where it was below 0 Last year, I think we only had maybe one or two days that got sub-zero. And this year, I don't think we've had any below zero days yet. I, I don't know if we will get them this year or not. It'll be interesting to see. But when it gets that cold, <laughs> I find that I'm always... We have gas heat where we live. And I find that I need to supplement with electric heat because it gets very windy sometimes. And when it's, you know, below zero, I uh, definitely need the extra, <laughs> need the extra heaters. So we have several different electric heaters which work actually really really well my where i live is very it's quite a small place so it, that actually works out in our favor because it takes much less to actually heat a room because it's small sometimes the the really big places the big houses it's just very difficult to keep them very warm because you're heating such a large area so sometimes having the little small place is awesome it works out especially when it's very cold but yes i do look forward oh my gosh i really look forward to seeing all of the leaves come back out on the trees and all the beautiful flowers and i talked to my mom and she's very very excited and very much looking forward to putting a she she has these um this amazing garden she's really awesome at just really awesome with plants probably unlike anybody i've ever known i am not the best with plants i try but i don't know my mom she's got a gift she's got a gift for plants so she's looking forward to it and I'm also looking forward to getting back out and going on some hikes. We have a lot of beautiful parks here, like uh, state parks. Lots of beautiful woods, beautiful like forest type areas. So it is, it's, it's awesome. I'm very excited for the change of the seasons. And I do love all the seasons. Um, I think there is definitely a, a beauty to all of the seasons we have, and I appreciate all of them. But eventually you get, <laughs> like you'll get tired of summer. you be like, okay, I'm ready for fall to come now. And then fall comes and you're excited and then eventually you're like, okay, I can't wait for the first snow. And then after several months of snow, you say, okay, I'm ready for spring. <laughs> and then you get, and when spring's going, you're like, okay, I'm ready for, I'm ready for it to get warm enough so I can go, go swimming without turning blue. And I, I want, I want to go camping without freezing and, so then the summer, you know, it's just that continuous cycle of you're so excited and then you're, you know, ready for, <laughs> you're ready for the next season. Okay. 
so as I was painting this, I kind of went over it multiple times. I kind of got lost in, you know, chatting about <laughs> seasons there. But I think that that's very beautiful. And so the next thing, <laughs> next thing we're going to do is we are going to create lines that go like this. Kind of the split in the leaf. And we're using the, the limeade green to do that. So you're just going to draw paint, rather. Line down the middle of that one. And then we're going to do another, <laughs> I'm being a goofball, line down the middle of this one. Yeah. And of course, again, they don't have to be perfect lines, just... And when I draw a line with a paintbrush, I'm going to show you this because this might be helpful. Get my pinky out like this. See? And I'll rest my pinky down. And that is a stabilizing force for your hand. Okay? I'm going to kind of get in the frame a little bit better here. So it's a sta stabilizing force for your hand. And if you need to kind of practice that, but if you try it, and I, I rest my hand and my arm on my table, but you just, you know, dip in, put your pinky down. And this is just a, one way that you can do it, but it creates a stabilizing force. And then moving, see how I move my fingers? My pinky's staying here, but I move my fingers in whatever direction needs to happen. So in this case, I put my pinky down and then I put my brush on and I just, there. Sometimes I, again, put my pinky, my pinky's kind of curled up, but then if I want to go back this way, and that's just might be a helpful thing for those of you who are a little, maybe you're shaky, because there's some people that are kind of shaky, but whatever's comfortable, you know, sometimes you can put your pinky on the side of something to stabilize your hand. And sometimes when I'm doing art, I'll hold my hand or hold my wrist with my other hand to help just stabilize my hand so that way you get a, a little bit smoother smoother of a of an application and there sometimes when i watch other artists i'll like look and see how are they how do they stabilize their hand like and yeah you can if you're really st let's see i'm i'm super stable if i just hold hold out my hand so I'm pretty steady handed naturally, but there are people who come up with creative ways to you know, stabilize their hand. Okay, so we got our midpoints. And now we are going to, let's see, what should we do first? We will start adding in Let's see, we do a little bit of this green. We're just gonna kind of add some, maybe a little bit of like bright spots in some of the leaves. Doesn't have to be on every leaf, but I'm just gonna kind of add in a couple little bright spots here and there. Do, 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 do. Yeah, and then after this part, we are going to be, oh, I almost dropped my brush. I do that occasionally where I'll just drop my brush and paint goes everywhere. <laughs> you and I do it. I'm like, whoops, oh man. And I just pick it up, clean up my mess and continue painting. It happens. 
even even to me it still happens or occasionally I'll drop my brush it's kind of funny uh, and add a little bit of brightness here a little bit of brightness here yeah so this this is something that'll help you uh, the leaves I have in the foreground. I'm going to add a little bit of brightness to those edges just to create the illusion that it's coming forward in space even more. Just a little bit. Okay. It's looking like looking like a four leaf clover, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to get a darker green. And this is called Christmas green actually. A little bit darker. And I'm going to put a little bit of that on my palette and we're going to use this just a touch. Just a touch of that. We are going to use this to kind of shade excuse me, a few of these areas. I was just having a little burp there. Sorry, excuse me. My goodness. Can't take me anywhere. And we're just going to deepen some of the some of the little areas on the petals that are in the back. And I might want to make this even a little bit darker. And for that, I have what's called Admiral Blue. It's actually a very, very dark, like, navy blue. And I might end up adding a bit of that as well. We shall see. So we're kind of just darkening this a bit. Those are starting to somewhat recede. And as you paint, you might want to add some darker kind of veining to create a bit of texture and depth. I mean, you, you can take this as far as you wish. You can make it as simple some some clovers are paintings or artworks of them are just very 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 basic very simple um but we're getting a little little fancy with it today ah, da, 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 da. let's see And at the very end, if you want your clover to be very shiny, you can put a, a clear coat on it. You can clear coat the entire rock if you want the whole thing to be shiny. If you just want the clover to be shiny, you can just paint your, your clear, clear coat over the top of the clover. I may just clear coat the clover when I'm done. And one of the things you can do, and this is something that I, I have a tendency to like to do, is I have what's called matte medium, and that actually will work just fine if you wanna do like a protective coat. But I also have, let me get it off my shelf for you to see, I also have a different brand of, of a gloss medium, okay? So if you want a high gloss, you can use a gloss medium. If you want it to stay matte, but you want to protect it, try, you know, a matte medium if that's what you want to do. I will put some gloss gel medium on this. I had the paintbrush in my mouth. It sounded like I was lisping. Um, 
and we'll probably put this on top. And when you put a gloss gel medium or a gloss top coat, a lot of the times it does something fantastically cool to the painting you've made. It'll make the colors appear more deep and rich and bright. So if you are interested in that look, if that's something you like, I would recommend you try it and you watch your, you can watch your art transform before your very eyes when you put that on. It just gets such a depth. It's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. I'm sure some of you may have seen those videos where there's artists who will take uh, and put varnish on paintings like uh, oil paintings and things of that nature. And it's so satisfying to watch that, pro at least I think it is so cool to see that process because you see this very almost, I mean, dull looking paint job. And then they put that varnish on top and it just turns into almost an entirely different piece of artwork just from putting it down. I might have to do a video like that one day where I, if I, if I do get into like the oil painting and, um, do the varnishing, I might have to make a cool video like that. Cause it's just so neat. So cool. But yeah, if you want to look that up, look up uh, maybe on YouTube or whatever video sharing site that you like and uh, check out paint, you know, artist varnishing paint paintings or whatever. It's so neat. The other videos that I actually kind of like to watch from other artists Every once in a while, I'll find somebody that does a fantastic job at paint pouring. And I'm not really an abstract artist fan, but watching the people do the paint pouring, it's so neat. They have There's so many ways that people come up with these brilliant contraptions to hold their canvases and rotate them while they're pouring paint on there and the designs often come out looking really awesome and it's just so cool it's really really cool okay so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna add i think i'm gonna add a bit more i'm gonna take some of my medium green i hope you can see that yeah you can see that okay so <laughs> some of medium green and I'm going to slightly shade the leaves that are in the background. I'm going to shade some of the bright bits just a little bit. I'm going to just bring the brightness down a touch, like barely touching the brush and making very quick kind of strokes. Very light, just kind of push that brightness slightly back and kind of kind of just dampen it down a touch like so very lightly and then I am going to get some of my admiral blue I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to my dark green just one like one or two little drops one we'll just do one mix it together to create kind of a dark blue green a dark blue green almost a teal i love teal and then we're going to go and paint these leaves that are in the background we're going to add a little bit more of a darker color. To maybe the middle. Yeah. Kind of the middle area like that. And then I'm going to carefully 
follow that little bit of a line there. Little bit of a line there. This is a lovely color. It'll be fun to do the clear coat gloss on this because it'll the, the colors will deepen these dark tones will get even deeper. There. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, now I think I'm going to add a little bit of highlighting. I've got to find a brush that I want. I'll be one of these little guys. One of these baby guys. Add some highlights. And instead of doing just total white, take a little bit of my white paint and a little bit of my lime green and mix them together so they just gets a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a little bit of this lighter color to my leaf that it, my leaves that are in the foreground. Just a little bit. Maybe a little bit of highlighting around the edges. Just a tiny bit. extra brightness here. Maybe just a tiny bit to the middle. And you can just kind of play around with adding a little bit of highlights where you think that they look the best. Thinks that that looks really cute. I like it a lot. I am satisfied. I believe that I, I I'm going to call it done. I mean, yes, you can go in and you can continue to add more layers of green colors if you wish and make your gradients and your you know, you know, lines and things even more crisp if you wish. It is totally your painting. You do what you do. But yeah, I think that that's complete. So now I'm going to fan it a little because I'm going to show you the erasing the erasing portion, if I can find my eraser that I like. I like the, there's lots of erasers I like. I like the white erasers. I like the pink erasers. And sometimes I like the erasers that are the very malleable, what do they call those? They're like, uh, oh, there's a name for them. And I just, I just, I'm having a brain fart and I can't remember, but they're the gray ones that you can roll in shape and they're a self, like a self-cleaning. So all you're going to do is take your eraser and any white lines or pencil lines that might be peeking out, you just go ahead and erase them and they will disappear. Might take a little bit of time to get them all gone, but they will go. And then you'll be left with just this very clean paint job. As I'm erasing, I'm shaking stuff on my table. You might hear that. It's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, I swear all the tables in this, in this dang house, they all, 
move around and make funny noises and got some rickety tables around here. Eventually, the plan is that we're going to build a custom desk for me, like a one out of like really solid, very, very sturdy wood. And it'll be customized so that way I can have my laptop and I can have lighting and I can have all of my stuff in one place, which would be wonderful. But we've taken our time kind of designing or starting to, you know, really work out what it is that I want and how I want the desk to look and do I want it to be more of a modular desk where it could, you know, change size, like it could get bigger, it could get very small. So there's a lot of things to consider when, you know, designing furniture and Pops Fabridius and Kenny Fabridius are my awesome volunteer building people. They love helping me come up with <laughs> the next thing, you know, if I need a set built or I need something. They, they love working in the wood shop and <laughs> so I'm very fortunate to have people who know what they're doing helping me <laughs> with stuff because I am not a carpenter. I have really no talent for working with wood. But there, there it is. And it looks like it is dry. So I think what I'm going to do now is I am just going to go ahead and show you the amazing gloss process, the glossing, glossing it up. Okay. While I'm shaking this, I'm going to tell you something about Abraham Lincoln. Want to know a weird one about him? So Abraham Lincoln, apparently he carried a four-leaf clover with him everywhere he went. But the story, and I don't know if this is a true story or if this is a fake story, but the story is, is that the night he was assassinated, he was not carrying his four-leaf clover. That's kind of, kind of weird. That makes such a strange noise. So just all we need is just a tiny bit of this gloss medium. Put it in my palette. And then I'm going to find a soft, let's see, what brush do we want now? We're going to pick a soft, something soft. Yeah, maybe a little, just a, just a soft brush. We're going to dip into our medium. And we are going to put it on. So we're just going to kind of paint. And with gloss medium, when I put on, you want to work not super fast, but you don't want to dawdle. You want to get it on there. Because this stuff, if it dries like in a really weird way, I don't think that you really can fix it. So you kind of got to get it on there. And so the, you know, I will put it on in the direction of my paint strokes. That's just something that I like to do when you're working with putting like a gloss medium on canvas. Sometimes you want to put a couple of very light, thin coats on, but you want to change the direction in which you put it on. If you're dealing with a lot of heavy texture, it's good to do really light coats. Go maybe up and down, do one coat, let it dry, and then go side to side. It's a, it's a good way to make sure that you get optimal coverage. But for this teeny little project, I'm just going to do a one direction application and just go in the direction of the way I put the paint on. So going from the center outward or from the 
whichever way, direction you want to go, the outside in. I just follow the direction of how I painted it. And it does dry, like I said, it does dry fairly quickly. So you want to get it on in a way to kind of test to see if you have good coverage is to tilt it in the light. Tilt it around like this. And you will notice if you see any spots that didn't get any on it, when you tilt it in the light, you'll see a spot that looks very flat and, or very matte. And you just put a tiny bit on there and it fixes it. So you're able to, it's a one good way to, you know, really look it over to make sure you didn't miss any any spots. And I am happy. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. See, I found one. Just a little bit of weirdness there. I am happy. I am thrilled. I think this is so cute. And because of the way I painted it, it doesn't really matter which way I display it. It looks cool from all angles. And yeah, so there it is. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is that shamrocks and four-leaf clovers are not the same. So shamrocks only refers to the clover that has three leaves. So that is the difference. That is something that I did not know until just the other day when I was looking, looking up all these cool fun facts. So a shamrock has three leaves. And a four-leaf clover has four. All right, guys. So I will pop in some cool close-up images of this in this video at the very, very end. So you can see it very close. And I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this project. And so now, if you would... Please give me a thumbs up if you if you had a great time, if you enjoyed doing this, if you enjoyed just watching me paint it. And if you would also please remember to share this video. Share it with your friends if you think someone would love to see it. Because sharing my videos helps me tremendously. And I am very grateful for all of you who have stuck with me, who continue to watch. I do this not only for me because I love making these videos, but I also do it for you, my fans. You guys rock. And yeah, so if you make any cool paintings like this, feel free to share them with me. I would love to see your creativity. And with that said, I am going to go and I'm going to start working on the next thing, which... <laughs> is going to be quite funny. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but I have an Easter video that's going to be coming out pretty soon. So stay tuned for all that fun. <laughs> all right, guys, take it easy. Bye.